All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to show you how to hook up your Switch Pro Controller to your PC and play all of your games using the built-in Steam drivers that come with the program. So the first thing you need to do is plug in or connect your controller, your Pro Controller, to your PC either with a cable or via Bluetooth, and then go ahead and open up Steam and find your way to the upper left hand corner under the name Steam and then click on settings. From here inside the settings panel, we want to go into the left hand sidebar all the way to the bottom and find the controller settings. And then the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that support for the Switch Pro controller is properly enabled. So we're going to go to general controller settings. And that's going to open up a little settings panel that's from Steam Big Picture Mode. And we're just going to make sure that all the different controllers that you might actually want to use are selected in this setting. So if you got PlayStation controllers, you want to click this. Xbox controllers, you want to toggle this setting here. What we're mostly interested in is the Switch Pro Controllers configuration support. And then it comes on by default used Nintendo Switch button layout. And what this is going to do is all of the buttons displayed on screen are hopefully going to be set up so that it looks like the buttons that are currently displayed on your Switch Pro controller so that you don't look at a bunch of Xbox buttons and get confused because the Switch also uses YXAB for their buttons. And then down here, if you also use a generic gamepad plugged into your computer, you can also enable support for that right here. And so if everything is set up correctly, once you enable Switch Pro Controller support, and then you come back into this menu, your Nintendo Switch Pro Controller should show up under the list of connected devices. If not, then you might need to unplug it and replug it in a couple of times and see if it shows up then. Because now that I've got it plugged back in, you'll see it pops up and it's using Larry's configuration. So that's what you want. And then after that's done, we can move on to the next phase. So there's a few other categories of buttons that you need to worry about. You probably don't need to worry about by guide button cord configuration, but you want to pay attention to desktop configuration. Starting in desktop, here are all of the button configurations that I've got set up for my desktop setting. This just kind of controls what happens when I'm moving around on the desktop, because you can, in fact, control everything that you see on the screen using the controller, including the mouse. And then if you want to rebind anything, you just have to find the button here on the controller by hovering over these different sections and then clicking on them. And then you can click on these pull down menus in order to reconfigure every last setting on here, including the gyroscope, if you want to. Now, a lot of these settings are things like navigating on your desktop, but a lot of these settings, they'll just take the default controller configurations in the game once you get in there. So if you're inside of these configurations, let's just start back over again. So taking a look at the first section, we're going to look at the desktop configuration, and this is the controls for your controller moving around on your desktop, not necessarily just playing games. And this allows you to do things like move around the mouse and, you know, switch between different objects here in this list. I'm currently using the left joystick in order to move around. And if this is completely empty and you really just think to yourself, Larry, I don't want to manually bind all this stuff. That's a, just a giant pain in the butt. What do I do? Well, down here, there's some other settings. You can export your configuration and save it for later or share it. But what you can also do is browse existing configurations that are made by Valve for some default ones, along with ones that are made by people in the community, depending on what uh, games you want to play. But what we can do is we can just sit, stick with the basic configuration for like, let's say the Xbox One controller. And that makes this really easy to use this controller like you'd use for literally any other basic generic controller. And then you just hit apply at the bottom of the screen and boom, 
everything is already set up and ready to go and you can click on done. Next up is the Steam Big Picture Mode. Big Picture Mode is that mode that you'd use that's kind of like a console mode. It was designed when Steam machines were like the big crazy thing in the news and they wanted you to link your computer with your living room TV to play games like you had your own console, but it was just a PC. Um, similarly, these should be filled out by default, but if you find that these aren't, just browse for a configuration that looks good to you. I tend to just stick with the default ones, but if you know you want to change stuff around, again, you can just click on any one of these sections and rebind the keys. You can click on done, and that's basically it. You should be good to go so long as your controller is detected and you've got you've made sure that all of these key bindings are set up. When you get into the game, it should just grab your controller and shift the normal Xbox button configuration onto your controller. And in the case of the Pro Controller, it should, with that setting I showed you, project the correct buttons for the Nintendo configuration onto the screen. Although I will note that does not necessarily mean it works for all games, but hopefully any game with Xbox controls should properly mirror that. So that'd be it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will catch you next time. Uh, if you have any questions, throw those in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, bye everyone and have a good one.